Okay, lesson 92 involves what's called a boat in the grip of word problem. It could also be an airplane in the jet stream word problem. Just it's involving some vehicle where an outside force is acting upon that vehicle to speed them up or slow them down. And um, <clears throat> the first priority in these problems, and it's very important, is to establish how fast the vehicle can go when nothing else is acting upon it. Uh, they give this information several different ways. Uh, the first way will say um, something like this. The speed of the boat on a lake is this. Okay, lakes don't have currents, so therefore that's the speed of the boat in still water. Okay, on a windless day, the airplane flies at this speed. Okay, so they're going to tell you, or they might just say the speed of the boat in still water is this. So um, it's up to you to interpret it properly, but that's an important thing that you need to know. For the sake of what we're going to use these for, Let's just represent the rate of this boat still water is going to be represented by the letter B. Okay? If they tell you what B is, that's great. If they don't, that's fine too. But that's one of the things you want to find before you start working these problems out. What does B equal? The other thing you want to concern yourself with is what is the rate of the current? That could be the speed of the wind, the speed of the water, whatever. And just for um, giving this name, let's call that C. Okay. Before you start um, doing anything else in this problem, identify B and C. Either you know what they are or you don't. If you know what they are, B equals 10, C equals 2, whatever. If you don't, B and C are fine variables to use for those things. All right. <clears throat> Second step. Create your chart, and then you have upstream and downstream. When you're talking about being on a river or in the jet stream, <coughs> upstream is when you're going against the current. So you want to go this way and the stream is going that way and they're, it's pushing against you, slowing you down. Okay? It's going to be still water minus current. If the current goes faster than your boat can go, you can't go up the river. Okay? If your boat can go 5 miles an hour and the current's 10 miles an hour, you're not going up that river. All right? Uh, typically, B is bigger than C. But... It's always the B minus the C. Downstream, now you're going this way and the current's also going that way. It's pushing you faster. So boat plus current, those are going to be your rates every time. And again, if you know specific numbers, the boat, the boat can go 20 miles an hour in still water. The current's 5 miles an hour. 20 plus 5 is 25 downstream. 20 minus 5 is 15 upstream. Okay. If you know the boat, don't know the current, let's say the boat's 20, the current's unknown, Upstream, 20 minus C. Downstream, 20 plus C. So you have the capacity to use these two things in step one to establish the rates. <clears throat> the times and distances should be in there um, to be filled in like normal. Usually they give you the distances. The boat can go 60 miles upstream in the same time it took to go 200 miles downstream. Okay, 60 down, upstream, 200 downstream, the same time, T and T. So using variables like we normally do. Now, the thing about these problems is you're allowed to use two variables. Typically, we only get to use one variable. Also, typically, we draw a picture. We don't have to draw a picture in these. Those of you who don't like to draw pictures, you should be happy about that. Okay. <clears throat> Once you've filled in the rates, the times, and the distances, so both the charts are both rows filled out completely, rate times time equals distance, like always. It creates an equation, a system of equations with two variables, uh, advanced substitution, which is what we've done before. The problems that said B, T sub D, those things, those are these problems. All right. So once you get to this point, you should see a system of equations you've been solving now for several weeks and just um, solve the advanced substitution and then answer whatever question, like usual, you know, how, how long did it take or what was the speed of the boat, that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> take a look at example one. <coughs> Robert and Clay can go 60 miles downstream. In the same time, it took them to go 20 miles upstream. If the speed of the boat was 8 miles per hour in still water, so I know B is equal to 8 miles per hour, what was the speed of the current? And what were their times? So I can see very clearly what the questions are. One of the questions is, what's the speed of the current? That's the very first thing I'm supposed to be looking for, right? 
how fast the boat can go in still water, and how fast the current is. So I can see very clearly that the speed of the boat's given to me, still water speed of the boat, eight miles an hour, speed of the current's unknown. Okay, I know it's less than eight. I know that because he got upstream. Okay, but the, the point is that we don't know what C is at this point. So <clears throat> first read through, that's what I'm gonna do. As soon as I see words downstream and upstream, I know it's this kind of problem. I start focusing on how fast can that boat go when there's no current, how fast is the current. If I know what I write it down, if I don't know what I, know what I put a question mark, that's going to represent a variable. So at this point, upstream and downstream are going to be in the categories, and upstream is always speed of boat minus speed of current. Order matters. It's always boat first, current second. Downstream is speed of boat plus speed of current. So this is the main difference in these problems beyond the fact that I don't have to draw a picture. That's also a difference. But the main difference is there's more than one thing influencing rate. So we have to have several things influencing rate here to create the rate objective. The other stuff has to do with times and distances. Do time like you usually do. Distance is typically given in these problems. So 60 miles downstream is very obvious, the distance going downstream. And 20 miles upstream is very obviously the distance going upstream. It says in the same time. doesn't tell me how much time though, right? So times are both P, unknown, but the same. And that's what I want to be able to do on these problems every time. Fill in the rates, fill in the times, fill in the distances. I get to use two variables at most, as you can see. Two variables being used here. And now it's just a matter of using the rate times time equals distance to create true equations. Notice that we have a binomial times a monomial, rate times time equals distance. So 8 minus C times T is going to be 8P minus CT is equal to the distance 20. And then this one's going to be 8T plus CT is equal to 60. I'm going to create one of these advanced substitution or possibly elimination scenarios. Uh, you can see here the variable types. We have T variables and CT variables, so those are common terms, common types of terms, right? So elimination is legal. Whenever elimination is legal, it's, it's worth doing it that way. If you recall from those problems, um, <clears throat> The one with more variables in it is the one to get rid of, even if it's not set up well to do that. So this one, it does happen that CT is the one ready to go, so we're good. So minus CT and plus CT cancel. 8T plus 8T is 16T. 20 plus 60 is 80. If I divide both sides by 16, that's going to get me T equals 5. If I go back to my chart to interpret what T means, T is the time of both upstream and downstream, right? So five hours. It says, what were their times? Got that answer, right? The other question is, what's the speed of the current? I don't know what the speed of the current is currently, but once I know T equals five, I can go back to either equation. I'm going to go to this one here. I'm going to change each of the T's to five. So eight times T, changing T to five, plus C times T, changing that T to five, is equal to 60. That means that 40 plus 5C is equal to 60. If I move the 40 over, I get 5C is equal to 20. Divided by 4 gets me, or sorry, divided by 5 gets me 4. Uh, the unit of speed in this problem is miles per hour, so the current is going to be 4 miles per hour. Again, I got on my paper, I already know what C represents is current. C always represents current, B always represents speed of boat. So when you get a C equals, know that it's going to have a unit of rate on it. When you get a T equals, it's going to have a unit of time on it. And again, distance is almost always given in these problems.